today is the first day I'll be checking the block heater. All right, so first time starting it with the block heater on. All other than the batteries being a little bit low, that's awesome. Hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Helicool's Helipad. You know, if you're working on these CTIS parts here, and especially the wheel valve, you're probably gonna wanna go into rehab after a while because sometimes, uh, well, if you can't get them to work right away, you know, especially after cleaning all this up, cleaning up the diaphragm, you just can't get the doggone thing to work. Um, and I've also heard of people snapping off the bolts here. And I was thinking, wow, you know, I didn't have any problem at all getting uh, my other uh, bolts off. But this one here, I decided to go ahead and pull it off too, just to make sure, you know, that I wasn't uh, just, just uh, lucky. And I happened to be just extra lucky because I broke two of them off, okay? <laughs> so now I know your pain. So you know what? We're gonna do a little bit of research and a little bit of work on these to get them back to where they need to be. You guys stay tuned. So the thing is, why are these such a problem? Why are these bolts just getting uh, locked in there and they're just so hard to get out? Well, it's called electrolysis. And when you have dissimilar metal, which the housing is aluminum and the screws are steel, you have electrolysis. And what happens is there's a little bit of current that's actually developed between dissimilar metals. And over time, it will corrode that bolt right into place. And you know what corrosion does? Well, it not only weakens the bolt, but it also really, really holds that bolt in tight. So that's why these tiny little things end up snapping when they come off. As for me, when I put mine back together, they're gonna have some anti-seize on there to help prevent electrolysis. Now this actually comes out. It is a standard half inch socket. And it has an O-ring right behind it. This is another possible leak point. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change out this O-ring. It looks like it got a little bit shredded. All right, let's see about extracting these. This one, fortunately, is up just a little bit. So that is going to be the easiest one. I don't have to get an extractor. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna heat it up, not a paid advertisement, and we'll see if I can't uh, grab it with a pair of vice grips and pull it out. Well, full disclosure, guys, I really knew that I was screwed as soon as the extractor busted off in the hole. So that is what I had to do to get that out of there. I really, really feel for you guys that get, uh, <laughs> uh, that have those bust off. I've got one more to come out. I still have a little peg that's showing, but I put vice grips on that and everything else and I, it, it still will not come out. I heated it up, I put a PB blaster and it is still fighting me. So 
Wish me luck on it. Uh, hopefully it doesn't turn out like that one did. Now I have done everything that I could possibly do to ensure that this thing is not gonna leak other than changing the diaphragm. So I'm gonna pull this off just to see for myself. Ten minutes later. Seriously? I mean, I'm happy that I fixed it, but... What the heck else is going on with this thing? I think I was getting some back pressure and the back pressure was enough or fairly equal to the, the pressure from the tire and that back pressure just kept equalizing and not allowing that spring to push it all the way forward, thus letting the air out of the tire. But since I relieved the pressure here, I'm going to bet that that valve underneath or uh, right in front of the rear bumper, I'll bet you it's not leaking anymore. Nope, it absolutely stopped. Okay, well, I guess I have a problem with some pressure that's not being relieved. So I need to add that other ball cock. So make sure to relieve the pressure so my tires don't go flat. All right. Let's just see how much air we're losing out of here. Hmm. Look at that. See if I can show it to you a little better. Well, what do you know? Okay, now let's release this back pressure real quick. Listen, I'll bring you close. Hear that? Okay, let's tighten her back up. And let's go check that valve again. And absolutely nothing. 
Well, it is what it is. You know, when you're trying to troubleshoot, sometimes you have a good idea where it could be and sometimes you really don't because things are just kind of not acting like they should. But if you're diligent about it, you're gonna find it. But what I do want to, to show you, because most of the time you're not gonna have an issue like my trailer. My trailer is a one-off. It's the only one like it in the whole wide world. I really had to do some special things in order to get Cetus, Cetus to be working on a trailer, okay? But since I had the axle out of an LMTV, why not? Why not control the, the pressure in the, in the tires? So you're not gonna have that trouble most likely. What trouble that you are gonna have is a problem with these discs. Do you see how that, how that dimple is right there in the center? It's round dimple. And you can see it's kind of concave here. And you can see it's kind of bent in there. That's what an old one looks like. This is what a brand new one looks like. Okay, you see there's no dimple. It's not mashed in. It's flat. It's got a nice back to it. Okay, that's the difference. New and old. Okay, so most likely you're gonna wanna replace one of these. They're 10 bucks and I'll tell you a fabulous resource to get it from. Hey guys, I just wanna tell you about a really good resource that I just found recently, lmtvparts.com. There is a wealth of parts here, parts that are sometimes hard to find. And you know what? The guy can also reprogram CTIS and transmission controllers. It's pretty awesome. His prices are very reasonable. I mean, compared to other LMTV parts, they're pretty good. They're they're basically the industry standard. He's got door parts. He's got, you know, all kinds of good stuff that we are actually really looking for. So come on over to lmtvparts.com. Check him out. It's a really, really good resource. Hey, guys. I hope that you guys have better success than I did, especially with the uh, diagnosis of the wheel valve. I hope that you guys can get all of those bolts out. I definitely recommend getting some anti-seize. If you do get them out and you're putting them back in, anti-seize those suckers because man, it is a complete bear to get those out if they break off inside that housing. You guys, until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.